Belgian belly in front, 200 meters out. Chancho is just over a length away to the outside, but is inching closer. Belgian belly on the far side. Chancho is on the near side. Dillamar continues to close in third. Chancho is on the near side, getting on top, close over in the hands of Christophe Simeon. And Chancho is in his with prevails. Chancho wears has at one. Michael and Christophe Simeon. Yes, listen, I've been very fortunate to have spent a lot of time in the past with Michael and. Uh, He's been a fantastic example for me, for the whole industry, basically. There's so much that you can just sit back and take notice of what he does and how he goes about things and um, utilize that in your um, routines. It's um, an unbelievable privilege to train in the same time as a person that you have in high regard and, and rate him as a legend. I started with Michael um, in spending time with him in Kozilu Natal a long time ago, but I mean, I was fortunate enough to spend time with him all over the place. I mean, I've been to Newmarket, to Dubai, Singapore, um, obviously in Joburg, um, so you know I've I've learned a lot. I've been fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time, and and um, we've had horses together overseas, which he's looked after for me. So I have really been very fortunate to to see what most people don't. Michael's uh, put himself into that position, obviously, and I mean he probably deserves even more than what he's getting. Group ones and five countries, yeah. six countries. It's unbelievable what he's achieved and uh, obviously the his operation that goes out and sources these horses internationally, hopefully the, the big ones, they find what they're looking for. I mean the first phone call I got on course was from Stuart, which was fantastic. Um, I, I, I really appreciated that. Tyson was a good horse in his year. He wasn't a great horse, but he was a good horse in his year and went to Dubai and Mike won two with him there and probably could win just what he could win because that was the horse's ability. But sending him to Mike, I had full faith in Mike and I knew he's a great trainer and he'll get the best out of the horse. You know, Michael, uh, his 3,000 winners uh, is going to be a great achievement for him, and uh, I think he deserves it. You know, his winners have been all over the world. We go to Canada, we go to Dubai, we go to England. You know, he's just been everywhere. He's had winners everywhere, and when he goes and does what he does in the rest of the world, it gives us a good name and our brand as trainers. You know, the rest of the world looks at us and says, you know, South Africa produces some very good trainers. 150 metres out, light the lights, beginning to close the gas, championship fighting, light the lights are still coming, here's the post, South Africa, light the lights in the last bound. I just feel very fortunate and lucky to have been born into this family and be a son of my father and my mother who are both amazing horsewomen and, and, and horsemen. Um, and just besides that, I mean, my father and my mother have been great parents to me and um, you know, it's, I've been really lucky just to, to have them as people who can show me the way forward in life. The game's always been in my blood and I've always enjoyed racing and like you said, I mean, I was very committed to my school and the sports and I did have other things on my mind for most of the time, which is you know, due to the fact that my parents never pushed this on me either, which is very good of them. And um, it just kind of worked out that I, I came and spent a little time in the yard and the, the bug bit me as it did them. And um, you know, I'm never trying to follow in, in someone like my dad's footsteps. He's a, what he's done is, is unbelievable. Uh, you know, I just like to utilize the tools and you know the, the things he shared with me to, to try and do as best as I can. I'm sure he still wants me to, to go and learn from other people. Um, it's very difficult now though that we a very tight unit and it's hard to leave uh, the team here in South Africa. One way you learn, you learn fast is being out of your comfort zone. And you know, my dad's always been someone that challenges the boundaries and pushes the boundaries. And, He's never scared, my dad. He's always uh, he's got a lot of courage. He's very brave, and he's he's always willing to try the new the new things and blaze a new trail. So we've got to admire him for doing that. And um, you know, it's something that I think everybody, every young person that's in this industry wants to try and do is have a run overseas and you know, enjoying that uh, that experience. But it's it's not easy. And someone like my dad is uh, he's a pioneer in that regard. I don't think for one second that the figure of three thousand is a a conscious endeavour. And when it happens, uh, however it happens, with whichever horse it happens, is really irrelevant. Uh, but destiny always has a, a very interesting way of playing its hand. Yeah, it does. Um, I think my dad's 2000th winner was Irish Flame in the Derby beating Pierre Jordan. So I don't know if it's going to be quite the script like that. But um, like you said, whatever whatever horse it is or however it happens, it could be at the volume the workout is made in plate. But, you know, you'll always link it back to to my dad and, and it will always, you know, It'll always have some sort of meaning. Oh, for sure, Andy. You know, this is a very hard game. It's exacting um, and, and it's tiring and stressful. To, to get to 3,000 winners, well, that's a milestone of note. So uh, good luck to Mike, you know, full marks. 
you know, I've, I've been to Dubai a couple of times. We actually never cracked a winner there. We had some good runs, but we never got a winner. Um, it's a, it's a nice place to train, and but you know, obviously, Mike's made it as his home, really, if you like, home away from home, and he's done incredibly well there. Um, it looks like the competition's starting to hot up a little bit now, and you know, World Cup night, I think, it's sort of gained more and more recognition, and you know, the the multi-million dollar races, uh, obviously, they. They attract the American trainers' are, you know, uh, attention, and the, of course, the English and the French, and from wherever else. But, uh, you know, to be still competitive in that arena is is quite something. And, uh, yeah, like I say, full marks. And there is victory move. winning it? Yes. Why? Because he's a South African. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, and that makes him unbeatable. Yes. Yeah. Kirsten, what about you? Do you think your father's horse is going to win this? Yes. Yeah. Are you having a nice time here? Yes, thanks. What does, what does your father think of it? Is he starting to get a little bit nervous now? Mm, I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm. He's pretty cool. Well, Mum's here as well, and she's very calm and looking exceptionally smart as well. What do you make of the whole Royal Ascot experience? Quite an experience, I must say. I didn't expect it to be like this. It's amazing. Um, and Mike actually trains a huge number of horses in South Africa, doesn't he? So quite nice for him just to concentrate on one. It's very nice, so He's getting nervous now, I think. Well, the horse looks great. Wish you the best of luck. It's just been a roller coaster ride and amazing, and it's a privilege to be a part of this team and to work with Michael. He's, he's, he's got the passion and I enjoy what I do, the pre-training, and I've had some good horses pass through my hands, like Ila de Vittoria at White Hills in those days, and um, yeah, I try and do my best. He pretty much leaves it to me. He trusts me. He knows I know what I'm doing, and I'll just pre-train them, and as soon as I think they're about ready, then he comes in as a look at them and watches them work and makes an assessment. And having your son part and parcel of this whole thing, he's grown from a a very young man into a, a highly competent and very well respected young man. Yes, I respect him and he's, he's also passionate about the game and I don't know what we would do without him. And of course the rest of the team like Clayton and Vengi and John and Nathan have all been with us forever. So thank you to them. It's a hell of a milestone. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I mean, he's, he's, he's winning over 100 races a season. Uh, Mark's always been a fierce competitor, you know, he's a, he's a mate, but out on the field he's, he's your, your, your competition and he's, um, he's hard to beat at times, he's, he's a good trainer. Look, if you know Mike, you know, he's always trying to improve, he's always looking for an edge and uh, he doesn't stop investigating and learning, so uh, he's, he's sharp, he's got a sharp mind and he's, he's looking for the, for the edge and his results speak for themselves. You know, I was thinking about uh, my first trip to Dubai when uh, all those years ago when Dubai wasn't certainly what it is now and there was only a few buildings on the main road there and Mike had, uh, I think it was right approach and Lundy's liability that one on the evening. And, uh, you know, Mike has just been such a wonderful ambassador for our racing and, and I think almost single-handedly Mike has taken our racing and put us in the global sphere. Yeah, I think some countries didn't know we actually had racehorses. They thought we, were, we had zebras. He has helped put uh, our, our name on the, on the world map big time. All the accolades must go to Mike for, for putting South African racing and our horses actually on the map in the international stage. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's something I think we can all be very grateful to Mike for. There's no doubt in my mind Mike has worked uh, exceptionally hard and still has to work exceptionally hard because of the type of clientele that he has uh, buying horses for him and, and that he has to train for. So added to that, I mean, there's, there's huge pressure uh, involved and um, I think that um, whether you take a top golf professional like Rory McIlroy and, you know, he's coming down the 18th and has to hit that shot to win, it's probably exactly the same for Mike when he's got a good horse that he's got in a big race he feels exactly the same pressure and it's only all those hours of work and preparation behind the scenes all credit to him for, for doing what he's done. I mean it's been and is a wonderful journey for Mike and, uh, and, his, and his patrons to follow.
As far as golf is concerned, there's no question that Mike uh, plays a very fine game. He's managed to play on some great courses around the world because he is such a character and he, he's so dedicated even when it comes to golf, even if he falls into the Craig Stadler mold of golfer rather than the, the Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy mold. Uh, he's super competitive. I think it, uh, he's just geared that way, you know, because of his work and his career. Uh, on the golf course as well, he loves the game. He's a student of the game. I've had the, you know, the privilege of playing with Mike uh, a lot. He's played in a few pro-ams with me over the years and we've had great fun. I mean, he's had the privilege of training for Lee Westwood and, and Rory. They've all had shares in horses with him. So he's had uh, great experience in playing with some of the top players in the world. So. So yeah, he's a golfer by heart and, uh, and, and he's a student of the game. I've enjoyed uh, the times that we have played our social games and our gambling games and all those things that go with it. You know, socially we've chatted a lot about uh, his, his sort of endeavours to, to sort out this and, and where he can assist in this protocol issue that we've got with our horses going, leaving our country, going to the quarantines and three months here and eventually arriving late. And I mean, it's an unbelievable battle. However, the, the, the beauty and joy I, I find in that is that uh, even so, as a, you know, myself, a smaller owner, and I think I speak for many, many smaller owners, that lure of eventually getting a horse that you've got so good that you have the opportunity to race it uh, overseas, Dubai, or whatever it may be, uh, is definitely there, and I think it keeps a lot of us in the game. Uh, Maybe like Peter Nadu and Tyson, I mean, that was a fairy story. No, absolutely, you know, um, I, I, I've been a, a sort of a patron in Stuart Pettigrew's yard for 25 years and, and I was there when, when Tyson uh, was at his best and was sent over to Dubai. I mean, we all shared in that joy and glory and excitement and I think that is still there and that and that and that's testament to Mike's fight against uh, getting these protocols lifted off our, off our chest, so to speak. And when it happens, I, I really believe that the, that the floodgates and the value proposition at our sales for, for horses that are and have proven themselves on the international stage will open. And um, I, I would want no one else but Mike to take the challenge forward for us and, and keep stamping the, the, the global market with, with our horses uh, as the way he does, you know, showing the world what we can do.